Tonight on CTV News, growing and vocal opposition to the TPPA. New homes for Christchurch families in need and Littleton Art pays tribute to its local heroes. Broadcasting across Canterbury, from the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening, welcome to CTV News, now streaming live every night at ctv.co.nz. Well, there's growing and vocal opposition to the TPPA. MPs opposing the free trade deal met in Christchurch last night and CTV was there. We're looking at um, seeing if we can declare Christchurch TPP free zone. It's far from over yet for this Christchurch anti-TPPA group. We'll be going back to the Christchurch City Council who's already um, signed the 12-point resolution um, about free trade agreements and we'll be asking if we can actually declare ourselves a TPP free city as they're starting to do in the United States and in Europe as well. Over 100 people turned out to hear from the opposition and minor parties about the ongoing Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. The debate was organised by the group It's Our Future Christchurch to give politicians from other political parties the chance to express their views on the controversial deal. But there was one seat left empty. We were really disappointed and we tried and tried and tried. Um, I guess it wasn't a complete surprise um, so that they didn't turn up. So, um, but I felt that the rest of the MPs handled it really well and brought up some really good points about them not being here. Politicians should front up and explain their positions. It's a shame the National Party didn't show. The group says they contacted National, but they declined to front. There are thousands of people up and down New Zealand marching in the streets about the TPP. I don't actually agree with all of their concerns, but I agree with their right to express those concerns, and I think it's the responsibility of politicians to engage with them. However, Jen believes the debate that did go ahead questioned some interesting topics that have already been made public. I think there was a lot of um, new information and they would have got a good idea about the different, different stances, even the little nuanced differences between each of these parties. It's an opportunity to hear the issues around the TPP. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a complicated issue, so it's, it's great to be able to hear a whole range of views on it. The hour and a half meeting talked in depth about the views around the agricultural sector if a deal was struck by all countries involved and other areas around plain packaging tobacco and medication expenses. I mean it's difficult because the government's keeping it all secret um, so we're kind of boxing with shadows a little bit uh, and it's tricky because it doesn't require a vote of parliament. Uh, John Key can pretty much sign it off himself when the cabinet can. Uh, so yeah I mean it's about people power and people trying to put pressure to make sure that there's a bit of democracy in these trade negotiations. The group plans to hold a protest this weekend, something they have control of, but they hope the TPPA free zone could get the support of the public and the Christchurch City Council alike. With enough pushing, yeah, perhaps, but it's also about getting these conversations going. You know, there will be a lot of um, dissension, you know, people who are opposition to that, you know, people who don't agree with me and, that's, and us, and, and that's fine, but it's about having the conversations. Time will only tell about the agreement with Council. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. And just a footnote, CTV News made contact with three local national MPs and their response via email was that that was the first time they heard about the event was through CTV News. Well, another seven families will soon benefit from getting a warm house. Volunteers from Habitat for Humanity are getting back to work on building more homes for those in need. Here's Chelsea Daniels. It was cause for celebration today with the arrival of 12 Dow volunteers to help build affordable housing for seven Christchurch families. This is kind of like they've cleared out the executive offices in Australia to come and help in Christchurch. It's the city's largest rebuilding program and aims to help families currently living in substandard housing. Dow's employees worldwide have committed to applying their talents to positively impact the lives of others. Dow, a big international firm, have come here to help us out with some volunteering today. They've given us $400,000 towards building these houses. So it's fantastic to have that financial support, but it's a real buzz to have their moral support on site here today, and they're just getting completely stuck in with building garages at the moment. Construction started about four weeks ago now, and they're ready to start pouring concrete onto the foundations. We're making real progress on this site, so we've got seven families that will be shifting in here towards it's the end of the year and uh, we've got four red zone houses shifting onto new foundations. We're building three new kit set homes here so it's going to be a great little wee uh, development for our families. 
Dow has donated a lot of time and effort in building homes for Christchurch families, something that they are proud of. But last year, 2014, was our 50 years in, uh, of Dow in New Zealand, and we thought it was a great opportunity to give back to, uh, to New Zealand, who's been a, such a great uh, country for us. So we made a donation to Habitat for Humanity, specifically around the Christchurch uh, earthquake. Dow are dedicated to making the world a better and safer place, using chemical, physical and biological sciences to tackle the world's most challenging problems. It's important for, I think, all corporations, but we're 118 years old now and we are not only uh, are successful because of our employees and our customers, but also the communities in which we manufacture in. And uh, it's very important that you respect that and you find opportunities to be part of the community and when you can, give back to the community. The seven new homes are scheduled to be completed before Christmas, with four of the houses being relocated from the red zone and they're always looking for an extra hand or two. So we've got a lot of general volunteers who can just get stuck in, but what we're short of is people who um, are trade skilled. Habitat for Humanity is a global organisation that has helped build 800,000 houses around the world with around 4 million people housed. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Well, another international airline will add more summer flights to Christchurch. This time it's Qantas. It's providing 48 extra flights between Christchurch and Brisbane. The airline anticipates a busy summer season ahead and high tourist demand in the South Island. The move will bring an additional 17,000 seats to the three months of summer. Last year saw 60,000 visitors from Queensland, which Qantas says is a steady increase from the previous years. A Timaru man who assaulted an ex-partner and her son has been given a prison sentence, but not before breaking a protection order already out against him. A Timaru man who breached a protection order and assaulted a pregnant mother and her child has been sentenced to 15 months in prison. 25-year-old David Dawson was sentenced today at the Timaru District Court on five charges, which also included willful damage and breach of community work. The court heard Dawson went to the woman's house in April and verbally abused her. In doing so, he broke a protection order issued against him a month earlier. Dawson then repeatedly slapped the woman in her face, threatened to harm her and said she would be dead by the end of the day. Her young son tried to intervene and was thrown to the mat before Dawson assaulted him. The court heard Dawson had problems with drug use and had previous convictions. Home detention was denied. The judge also said Dawson was similar to many people up and down the country charged with violent offending. She said they were unable to control their emotions because they were also victims of violence as children. So to come here on CTV News, everyone says no to the new Manchester bus shelter. Welcome back to CTV News. It's a war expo with a difference. As Littleton's art scene gets back on its feet, the Tin Palace is hoping to get more feet through the door with a unique look at its past. Here's Jared McCulloch. Remembering those through art. This is um, an exhibition which uh, helps to celebrate and commemorate the World War I participation from Littleton. And what those numbers of data actually mean. By numbers she means those who served from the township of Littleton 100 years ago. 304 members of the community that left, three women and 301 men um, and so each one of these, it these items actually reflects those numbers. The exhibition at the Tim Palace showcases the impact of the First World War on the community and follows a story of the cultural view of fighting back in the 1900s. The room is split into three sections, identifying the brave men and women who went overseas, some not coming back. And the ones which uh, look like medals, they're the parts that the families would have uh, been left with. So the men who returned would have bought their entire necklace with them and the men who didn't, just the tag. I think it's actually in incredibly important to acknowledge what um, communities did during those war years. She says soldiers signed up as volunteers to discover a new adventure overseas. The name of the collection is War Story, with emphasis on the word toy in story. Having grown up using war toys, you know, the little soldiers, um, we play marbles, you know, and marbles are about 
you know, taking something, conquering something and taking something back again because you won. But clearly by 1916 that was no longer an adventure. And so they called out conscription and we really had to send more forces in. It marks the impact on this Canterbury community, something that many places around the country will be exploring as this year marks the first landings in Gallipoli. I think it's really important to not just remember those who died, but also just all the members who took part in it, because they rebuilt, or they, they came home and they built new communities with different thinking, different thought processes um, and different tolerances. It's taken her since the start of the year to construct her masterpiece, but she didn't do it alone. Dr Gwen Parsons from the University of Canterbury and she's a World War One specialist and we've been friends for a long time. I thought with all the, you know, the celebrations, I thought it was really quite, um, quite important to celebrate something that we'd both talked about for a long time and so this is sort of the result of those conversations. There's only two weeks left to view the display but a lifetime to remember those who fought for New Zealand. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Well, they say the cash is flowing in Christchurch, but is it flowing into your pocket? And have you had a pay rise this year? Well, the chances are probably not here in Canterbury, and that's even despite the rebuild, but why? Despite the rebuild moving along in Christchurch, pay rises in Canterbury have seen little increase compared to the rest of New Zealand. Seek says average salaries in the region have increased 2.6% over the last year, slightly higher than the national average of 2.3%. The job advertiser says this takes the average advertised Canterbury salary to little over $72,500 per annum. Salaries in Taranaki aren't much less, with those in Auckland and Wellington being the highest. In fact, Canterbury's salary increases are modest compared to other regions. This despite salaries for construction and engineering work seeing the highest increase. These jobs are now netting on average more than $92,000 per annum. Seek says employers should consider pay rise for their best workers as it costs on average three times more to replace one. Well, it's been stopped before it even started. The new super bus stop on Manchester Street has proven so unpopular it's gone back to the drawing board. Here's Jared McCulloch. It's back to the drawing board. <laughs> I'm actually th thinking I'm very pleased. Day-long discussions over a proposed super bus stop has been put on hold, with a new design starting from scratch. A hearing panel at the Christchurch City Council opposed the four options put forth to install a public transport shelter on a section of Manchester Street, with heritage advocates and central city property owners upset with the plans. Now Sarah and the council will have to start all over again. I'm very pleased. Um, a little surprised because I wasn't sure what the outcome would be, to be honest with you. But I do think it's the right decision not only for these landowners, uh, but for recovery on Manchester Street generally. Submissions that all the property owners made this morning were very strong. And it's all about access rights to property. And the panel listened and they've rejected all the options that they put forward. Earlier this year, Sarah and the council released plans for the Superstop, which would have featured two pods located under a shelter, holding up to 10 people at a time, along with other seating in the space. But it's understood at peak times around 600 passengers would be getting on and off the stop every hour, one concern of many. It could have been managed a whole lot better um, and it would have avoided the um, adversarial outcome that uh, has um, played out. They are not against um, public transportation at all. It's simply that it needs to be uh, appropriate to its location and to their surrounding context. And in this case, unfortunately, it was just too far wide of the mark. Heritage advocates want the stop moved back to its original site, a block away. It just means that the heritage is protected from visual impediment and for the moment, don't know what's going to happen, but they have been instructed to come back to property owners and work with them to find a solution. The uh, panel has made it very clear that they expect dialogue to occur with the landowners that are most affected and that's, to my mind, an entirely appropriate way forward. The process will start all over again with the council now working alongside Sarah to come up with a new plan. The proposal will be put forth to the Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee next month.
Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Right, are you the best dishwasher at your house? Well, chances are you're better than most New Zealanders, according to a new survey. Are Canterbury households more likely to empty the dishwasher than other New Zealanders? Apparently so, according to a survey on dishwashing machines. In fact, Cantabrians are particularly likely to show good domestic behaviour with this chore. 83% will even rinse dishes before putting them in the dishwasher and 72% say a dishwashing machine is a must-have in the house. However, similar to other New Zealanders, 61% of Cantabrians will try and squeeze as many dishes into the machine as possible. And only 22% don't understand the variety of dishwasher cycles. But similar to the rest of New Zealand, the majority of Cantabrians consider themselves to be the key person in the household who loads the dishwasher. And the survey says that a good portion of Kiwis appear to be shirking their chores, with half saying that no one else in the house empties the machine. However, compared to Aucklanders, Cantabrians are unlikely to have disputes and arguments about who should be doing the dishes. <laughs> Was that real? <laughs> Was that a real story? Seriously. <laughs> anyway, still to come here on CD CDV News, your region's weather. And welcome back to CTV News, streaming live every night at ctv.co.nz. And don't forget our newsroom is always keen to hear from you. You can always email the news team at news at ctv.co.nz. Well, it's broken its bank eight times in the last 150 years. Now, ECAN is fixing the problem once and for all. The Ashley River Stop Bank near Rangiura is finally being repaired. A stretch of stop bank at Rangiura is being reinforced to prevent the Ashley River from flooding. Environment Canterbury has begun works on a two kilometre length of the riverbank, which has breached eight times since 1868. Despite being strengthened in 1953, ECAN says the bank, commonly referred to as Break Bank, is still considered a risk. $2.1 million is being spent on the works, which will extend from River Road to West Belt and the railway bridge, using about 30,000 cubic metres of gravel. ECAN says the gravel had to be collected from Mount Thomas Road, 13 kilometres away, as the nearby riverbed is too low to source the material. Public access will be restricted for the duration of the work, which is expected to be completed by Labour weekend. The public will be able to continue accessing the walkway along the top of the existing Ashley River stop bank. All right, now time for the region's weather. to Canterbury. Well, another chilly start for most places this morning. However, we did have quite a nice day with fine spells for most of the Canterbury region. Today's highs first, 8 degrees for Timaru, Tamuka and Geraldine there, 7 for Waimati. Looking to central Canterbury, 8 degrees is also shared by Christchurch, Akaroa, Darfield and Ashburton, 9 degrees for Leeson there and 7 for Yumi Finn. Moving further north now, 8 degree theme here for Kaikoura, Rangiora, Cheviot and Col in Oxford, 6 degrees though for Hammer Springs and 9 for Amberley. And over to those picturesque mountains, 7 degrees for Mount Cook today. Let's see what tomorrow has in store for us. Timaru, north easterly is breezing on through later on for your Wednesday, 11 degrees for your high, a few cloudy patches amongst sunshine there for you. Looking to Ashburton, a similar picture for you tomorrow, north easterly is breezing through in the afternoon, 11 for your high and again, nice dry fine day. Christchurch, the sun is out tomorrow, we're expecting a high of 9 tomorrow, north easterlies as well but minus 1 for the morning. Kai Koda, not a bad Wednesday in store for you, 10 degrees for your high, so a little bit warmer than Christchurch and we're also expecting that cloud there too. Let's see what the rest of the Canterbury region is up to for tomorrow. We can see 11 degrees there for Tamuka and Jiri, north easterlies for South Canterbury, breezing on through. Central Canterbury, sunny skies with a bit of cloud in the sky as well. 10 degrees there for Akaroa and Leeston, and again, north easterlies coming on through, particularly later in the day. Heading further north, sunny skies for most places here. North easterlies there for Cheviot, but light winds for everyone else. 10 degrees for Rangiora. And over to the Alpine region, sunny skies here again, 8 degrees for Mount Cook. 
Let's see what the upcoming days are going to present with us with the weather. We're seeing northeasterly winds coming through, 12 degrees for Ashburton and Christchurch. A little bit of drizzle patches for Timaru and Ashburton, but nothing too bad. Looking to Friday now, we are expecting a southwesterly change for Christchurch and Kaikoura. That could be bringing a few showers with it. Looking to the upcoming days for the rest of the Canterbury region, we can see on Thursday these north easterlies gusting on through, particularly later in the day as I said before, few rain spots here and there for some places, but nothing too threatening. Looking to Friday now, we are expecting that south westerly change, particularly for central and north Canterbury, that could be bringing a few showers with it. So over the next coming days we are expecting severe frosts for inland and coastal areas tomorrow, and before I go, a big huge shout out again to Rolleston Primary School who actually came in and had a go at presenting the weather themselves and if you stick around for the CTV News Bulletin you might just get to see them. That's your weather for Wednesday. Very nice, you're right Mercy, we have got a bit of a treat for you tonight because before we leave you we're going to give you another special version of today's weather brought to you indeed by the students of Rolleston Primary School. You have a great evening. Hello Canterbury, I'm Jacob from Williston Primary School and this is your weather for today. Minus two to start off the day for Christchurch and they'll move up to eight for the South Westerly. Tomorrow you've got seven, unlucky Twizer you got five. And Christchurch is seven for Darfield six. Ashburton will have a cold start with minus two and eight degrees during the day South Westerly wind. Christchurch, chance of seven. Akaroa, chance of seven. Ashburton, six. It will be two in the morning with eight in the day with Kaikoura. There's a three seasons for today and there's five and that's not good. Ashburton, minus two with an eight with Sal Wesley. Sal trying to peek out of those clouds. Hello, it's Lily here from Liston School and I'm here to tell you the weather for Christchurch today. Today's highs. It's going to be chilly today. Tomorrow and tomorrow minus three and eight for your high. In Twizel it's just five degrees and everybody else is seven. In Akaro it's seven, Christchurch seven and Methan with only four degrees. In Hedden the Springs it's it's going to be very chilly, make sure you put on your jackets at 4 degrees. 7 for Christchurch, Leiston and Dekaroa. In Twizel it's going to be 5 degrees. Lake Chikapo with a 4 and Mount Cook with a 5. And that's the weather for today. Bye. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.